Hello and welcome. I'm Christian Frener and I will instruct you about the correct pronunciation of extraterrestrial names and other names and terms. There have been various requests by different persons in the last years about this uh, correct pronunciation and now with this short lecture I will fulfill these or answer these requests. There is a reason why Billy Meyer is writing his books in German. Because uh, as the Pleon have said, uh, that's the extraterrestrials, uh, German, Swiss German also is the best and the only language in which you can explain all as aspects and all details of the spiritual teaching. And because of this, I thought it's uh, necessary and advisable if I start with a short introduction in some basics of the German language. Okay? I will start now with reading these names here for you, which are representing the alphabet. While listening to my reading, you will notice that the names are pronounced differently when compared to English or any other language. Or at least the names are differently written. Okay, we start here. Adam, Boris, Cesar, Daniel, Eva, Franziska, Gabriel, Hugo, Iris, Josef, Karl, Lisa, Michael, Nicolas, Oskar, Peter, Quetzal, Rolf, Stefan, Thomas, Urs, Verena, Werner, Xaver, Yvonne, Zita. As you may have realized in German, you pronounce the words exactly as they are written. And I will demonstrate this to you in two sentences. Okay, this sentence here. I am the man who speaks to you. If this would be a German, language sentence here. It would be literally read like this. I am te man who speaks to you. Or written as said in German, I am the man who speaks to you. And here an example in French, so you can compare it. Je suis l'homme qui parle avec vous. That's your same sentence in, in French. If this would be a German sentence here, it would be read literally like this. Je suis l'homme qui parle avec vous. Je suis l'homme qui parle avec vous. It's different what is said here than what's written here in French. German is based on the old and very ancient language German, which itself is based on extraterrestrial sources. Here I present you a few specifications you will have to know for the correct pronunciation of the names that I will present a little bit later. These letters here, the F, PH and V are all pronounced identically. And PH here has some reference to Old Greek. We have here Fenster, the window, Physik, Physics, Vogel, Bird. At least this is the case here in at the beginning of these words here. These letters here are also pronounced identically. 
We have here the Haken, Haken, Quelle, kr, kr, kr. The Haken is the hook, the peg. Haken is uh, to hack, to hash. And Quelle, the well and the spring. And here, the combination of C and K does uh, actually accentuates the K here. Haken, Haken. These two combinations of letters are pronounced as sh, 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 like shu, shu. But when the s and the t are within a word, and not at the beginning, like here in Straße, it's pronounced as s t, Fenster, Fenster. Straße, Fenster, Window, and uh, in Swiss German it would be said as Fenster or the Feister with an S C H. And here, this combination here of C H is pronounced as in High German and stronger in Swiss German and it means here China, China, China and here this word here it's coming from the French it has been important from the French language and it's uh, spoken as chance, chance, chance in English. Here down here you see the so-called umlauts, e, ö, ü, as in the words here, später, later, körper, body or corpse, über, over. And here in the green, the green, the epsilon, is spoken in German as a nü, ü, like here, psyche. Die Psyche, Psyche. As a kind of a repetition, in German you are writing the words exactly as you pronounce them. And I give you another example with a sentence from the Ohm. Worte sind wie Blätter, Taten aber wie Früchte. Words are like leaves but deeds are like fruit or fruits. The combination of I and E here is usually pronounced as a long I. And here the two T accentuate the T just as it is the case in English. This small glimpse into the German language and the basics has prepared you for the next step here in my little lecture, namely the names of extraterrestrial persons. Svart here was the old man with whom young Eduard Meyer had contact with between age 5 and 16. During the following 11 years it was a woman called Asket who was Eduard's teacher. And take note here that the name is correctly pronounced as Asket and not Asket. In German, the German language, we have the Asket, Asketic in, uh, in English, but her name is Asket on the first, the emphasis on the first letter, Asket. Here, Pta, the son of Svat and the father of Semyase, the H here, and here, at the end of Svat and Pta is not pronounced, and both names were in use in ancient times here on Earth by extraterrestrials. Semyase is a name that is frequently mispronounced as Semyasi. And as you can read here, you will notice it's quite a, a contrast of the meaning here, because Correctly pronounced, Semyase means half goddess, 
it's kind of a title used here as a name and if used or uh, pronounced as semiasi it means curse goddess fluchgöttin cursing goddess and of course this is uh, a negative uh, it has a negative meaning the next page here is uh, the playaren that's not plecharen or anything like this playaren and on the one hand is the name of the star system in another dimension, many light years beyond the Pleiades, which we see on our night sky. And on the other hand, it's the name of the people or inhabitants, you could also say, of that star system. The people living on the Pleiaren are the Pleiaren. And Ple means Siebenheit or sevenness and yarn means law or gesetz and here we have the male and female forms of these dwellers of the priaren literally translated as dweller of sevenness here in the red color you see it's a chess the case also, as is the case also in the ex extraterrestrial language, it's also the case here in German. In German, you have differentiation between male and female here, which is not uh, the case in English. In English, you have the simple, just one form for a woman, child, or man. Pleare, the Jahre, and the Jahre. Jahre means the man, and Jahre the woman. And if we would say he's a Pleiari or he's a Yari, you read this as an E here, this would mean destruction. And so if you say Pleiari, he's a Pleiari, this means the des destruction of the sevenness. Now, after this introduction, about the correct spelling of the certain names here. I will present you the list of the names of all persons with whom Billy Meyer so far had a contact. We are starting now with the oldest one here. Svat, Askit, Semyase, Quetzal, Pta, Nera, Andron, Daniel, Andron, by the way, he is the biggest one, the, the, per, the biggest person Billy so far had contact with. His size is 5 meters and 20 centimeters. And Daniel here, he is 2 meters and 50, about 50 centimeters size. Pleia, she is the sister of Semyase. Pta, that's her father. Minara, Rala, Alena, Asina, Isados, Elektra, Sama, Ektol, Lumia, Ters, Solar, Talida, Zeltan, Florina, Tauron, Safinat Paneach, Samyang, Enyana, Sudor, Fetanika, Fetanika, Taneta, Nefratisa, Gaudon, Queda, Inobea, Melchora, Urlana, Jaspan, Naidesha, Kladenai Karina, that's one person. Susanka, Sugam, Xeruela, Xeruel, Xeruala. These are triplets here, the brother and two sisters. Safarina, Xavadon, Yoganda. Until here, this person 
were in contact with Billy until his 80th birthday on the 3rd of February 2017. These persons here appeared in the meantime since May 2017 until now we have March 2018. As you have, may have realized here, all the names here, except Semiase, with a A, A at the end, are female names, like this here, 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 here. Here I've listed the seven prophets of the Nocodemian line, who were and are enlivened by the Nocodemian spirit form, namely Henoch, pronounced as Henoch, Henoch, and not Henoch, Henoch, that's a different name and was used by various other persons, Henoch and Henoch. Here's the meaning, der Weise der Zeit. Then the next one here is Elia, Jesaja, Jeremia, Immanuel, Muhammad and Billy. Immanuel, who lived 2000 years ago and was later defamed by the upcoming Christianity as Jesus Christ, was called Immanuel. Immanuel in his time and not Immanuel. Immanuel and not Immanuel as we are calling or referring to him today. And as you know, Immanuel, Immanuel was fathered or procreated by Gabriel, an extraterrestrial. And Muhammad here was also in contact with an extraterrestrial, a man by the name Gospod. So uh, when the Muslim are referring to Allah, Allah, actually it was a, a man of flesh and blood from, uh, from another world with the name of Gospod. And here to make the page complete here, Billy's uh, real names are Eduard Albert Meyer, not Edward, not Albert, Eduard Albert Meyer and not Meyer, Meyer or Meyer, but Meyer, Meyer. The combination here of the E and I here is usually pronounced in German as I, Meyer. Now the book Talmud Immanuel the correct version of what is worldwide known as the massively falsified New Testament has been written by Judas Iscariot, a disciple of Immanuel. He has been the only disciple who could read and write. And the one who had betrayed Immanuel and had sold him for a bag of silver and who is slanderously claimed as having been his disciple in the New Testament, was Judas, Judas Ishariot, and he was a son of the Pharisee Simon. And here you find the first the name here of the seventh of the pure spirit forms or levels, namely Petale, not Petali, Petale, the crown of creation, and the lowest of the seven levels here, Arahat Atersata, the well one who contemplates time. That's the meaning of this. Okay, enough names now. Now we concentrate and move on to the peace meditation sentence, the Salome sentence. Salome Gamnan ben Urda Ganniber asala hisporona. This means Frieden sei auf der Erde und unter allen Geschöpfen. Peace be on the earth 
and among all creatures or living beings. And the U here is abridged and accentuated. Urda. And this is Salome. Nan. Not Nan. Nan. Now, in the closing section of my presentation, I will demonstrate to you the correct pronunciation of the OM. OM. It's an abbreviation for Omphalon Ir Murado. Meaning Gesetz der Schöpfung or Law of Creation. And among Asket's people, the Timar, the Om is abbreviated as Oriseman. Oriseman has the identical meaning as Omphalon ihr Morado, Gesetz der Schöpfung. Now to the correct pronunciation of the Om expression or Om phrase. Actually, there are three letters involved, namely the O, the U and the M. The, M. the symbol for the Om or the Om symbol has been brought to earth over 13,500 years ago. And here you see the correct version, the ancient and original version. And here you see a false variation here. Okay, now regarding the correct pronunciation of the O, it's pronounced like this. O doesn't matter if you are keeping on a, on a level like I just pronounced it or if you go up uh, after the O like O O according to what Billy said you should use this um, expression not for minutes or until you don't have any more your breath but for about five to ten seconds, as I just uh, demonstrated it, and I will repeat it again. Om. And here you see the ratio between the the different the three different letters here, the O, and then three times the U, and two times the M. Oh, oh, oh. Now it's your turn to practice this Om expression and use it for meditation purposes. It's a, it's a means for concentration during the meditation and it has a, a beneficial effect on can have on your psyche and if you feel it here reverberating in your chest the vibration then you're doing it correctly and when I say you will feel it here in your chest this does also mean that you don't have to repeat the OM only in your mind but you have to express to pronounce it with your voice it only makes sense to use the om if you speak it if you if you say the om yeah and it's also important perhaps uh, as a, a last uh, note here for you repeating the om does not bring enlightenment that's no automatic way, just repeating and repeating and then at the end of your life you go to the nirvana or something like this. No, that's not the case. The really and decisive factor is what's in here in your head, within your skull, namely the brain. And within the brain you have your material consciousness. And with your material consciousness you are thinking. And actually, it's 
how you think and what you think, that's how you shape your life. Because from your thoughts result the feelings and also from your thoughts and feelings combined, but especially from your thoughts, your actions are steered and triggered. And therefore, controlling what you are thinking, it's your main task in your life. That's the real point where you are steering your destiny, your fate. Don't depend on anything, any God, any other person. It's you yourself with your own responsibility who is at the wheel of your life and you alone are deciding in which direction your lives will go and where you will stop and not trespass into some problem and so yeah that's up to you so keep this in mind and that's i think it's enough for today and so i have to say goodbye and salami